Hey everybody, this is TJR. This is Superfan. And we're just hanging out with the little guy. Also known as King of the Mountain. King of the Mountain, yeah. We have a very big vinyl unboxing to do. And what happened is, of course, I had decided to change my needle. It took a little while for it to arrive. It took a couple weeks, longer than expected. And so I decided I would hold off on opening any of these because the first thing I do, the first time I play them, is of course I digitize them. Opening any of them? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I held off on opening them. I thought, wait till you get the new needle. That way you're, you know, you're uh, digitizing them that way with the new needle on there. Also, I had this problem with my computer. After I digitized them, I would of course make a CD uh, for personal use, and then I would, you know, import that into my music, my Apple Music, and then, of course, sync it to my mobile device. And I was having a problem with CDs suddenly they wouldn't import. And it was, it, I couldn't figure it out. I uh, had a couple conversations with Apple Care. We got that finally figured out, too, today. I got the new needle yesterday. And so now we're going to unbox these babies here and, uh, and talk about them. And little guy, you're kind of in the way here. I'm going to put you down here. And uh, we're gonna start off here uh, with this first one here. And um, this is going to be, if they ship the right thing, of course, uh, one of the recent David Bowie half-speed remasters here. And Diamond Dogs is coming out in a couple weeks, the half-speed remaster, um, half-speed mastering, excuse me. I've picked up two previous ones. Ziggy Stardust and Aladdin Sane. And I was really pleased with the audio quality of those. So I've made it a thing now where I'm gonna be getting these. This was the last one they did, which I was a bit late in getting. Came out a little while ago. And this is Pinups. And um, we'll go ahead and try to get this one opened up here. In fact, I might ask for your assistance in opening it so that I can get to the other boxes as well. Um, real quick, I'll look at the, the OB here. This record was cut on a fully customized late Newman VM680 lathe with fully recapped electronics from 192KHZ restored masters of the original Trident Studios master tapes with no additional processing on the transfer. And we went and, to Trident Studios when we were in London. Yeah, we did. We stood outside. Well, we stood outside, yes. That was during our rock cabbie tour of, of, of London. Um, I'll let you open that one up and I'll get this have box going. Have you posted that yet? No, I haven't posted that yet. Well, I look forward to that video coming soon. Yes, to... look forward to that video coming soon. Once it's posted, we'll link it below. So uh, I saw that I had missed on this one. I hadn't gotten it yet, so I went ahead and ordered it. I've already pre-ordered um, Diamond Dogs. I'm just waiting for that one to come out, so I think I better get caught up here. Now, this next one here pertains is also Bowie related here. And let me open this up here and I'll talk about it here. Why they really, oh, okay. They put a box in the box. In fact, Pimps was the same way. I had already removed the other box, but they put a box within the box. Um, again, I know some people say Amazon doesn't know how to ship LPs, but I've always had good experiences with them. I've, I haven't had really good experiences. I think it depends on where it's coming from. I though. guess so, yeah. So again, they've put uh, the, the the album in a box and then put that in a box for extra protection. And that's good. But it may also depend on the manufacturer, too. It may be the manufacturer that... Yeah, it might be. I've had one or two bad experiences, but mostly all good. And of course, you can always return things on Amazon if you're not happy. Yeah. But, um, so here we go. Now this one here is also Bowie. And this is David Bowie, Divine Symmetry. Now what this is, is this is a companion to the, uh, the box set they did for Hunky Dory where um, they just did a box set of the extras that you would do on an anniversary box set, but not the album itself. The album had gotten a 2015 remaster and so they felt no need to remaster it or include it with the box set. They just included all the extras that you would normally have gotten. 
which is actually kind of a cool way to do it because it would have bumped up the price quite bumped a bit. Bumped up the price, yeah. So um, this was the LP of the alternate version of the album, um, is what it is. And of course you can see the back cover is similar to the back cover of Hunky Dory. But yeah, this is the alternate version of the album made up of, you know, session demos, work in progress tracks, that sort of thing. And this was very inexpensive. It was marked down. And I thought, get this now while it's marked down. Um, I'm still kind of hoping that they will do a half speed remastering of Hunky Dory. And then, of course, we can, um, you know, I can add it to the collection of these here. And thank you for opening this super fan. And so here we go. We've got a um, little insert here. And here's the LP. Not on any colored vinyl, just standard black vinyl here. And a polyline sleeve. And, uh, and just like the other half speed masters in the series, the Obi strip is designed to fit perfectly with the artwork. You can remove this and of course then you'll have the, the actual original artwork, but it is designed that way. And uh, so very nicely done. So this is the first time I've looked inside of this here and uh, we've got here a booklet here. Bowie during his long hair days. And here's the interior. I'll open the other pages here so you can take a look here. Or wait, oh no, it's not a booklet. Maybe it's a fold out. Let me see. Oh, it's a fold out, excuse me. It's a fold out. I was incorrect. Like I said, first time looking at this here. And let's take a look here. Okay, these are lyrics. Yeah, lyrics and liner notes for it. And here's the LP, black polyline sleeve on black vinyl here. And uh, so yeah, I decided I would just get this while it's inexpensive. Yeah. Uh, Cause they had marked it down quite a bit. And I'm kind of hoping that they will release a half speed mastering of Hunky Dory. We've got the 2015 remix of course on CD and vinyl. Um, that's available, but I'm hoping they'll do a half-speed mastering. But, um, but here is the alternate version of the album here, made up of the uh, demo session tracks, etc. There we go. And those are the two Bowie releases that we have for this. Next, we have something that I picked up on eBay. You may remember Record Store Day, I couldn't find that Frankie Bally and the Four Seasons uh, Imitation Life Gazette. Hopefully I've said the title right. I've been known to get that title wrong. I couldn't find it. I couldn't get it. So um, they didn't have it at the store that I waited in line for. And so I picked up a vintage copy on eBay. And this is it here. This person has sealed this up pretty darn good. We've got some more wrap. Let's just tear this up in here. And, okay, and we've got some more cardboard. Okay, he just did that to give it a little strength. Okay, so there's the album. Is make sure, is there, there's something in here still? I think there might be. Yeah. Maybe he put the extras in there I'm to protect them. Oh, he put the LP. This is the actual LP. He put it, he wrapped it up and put it between this versus just putting it in here. Huh. Wow. I'm going to set that down. Let me just take a quick look here. Okay, so... It looks like he wrapped it in saran wrap? Yeah. I don't know... <laughs> Um, I'm a little scared. I'm, I'm going to be just, I'm not going to do this on camera, try to take this off. I'm going to be more careful and do it off camera when I can be more careful about it. And, uh, but yeah. I have to say that is the weirdest packaging we've ever got. Yeah. I mean, he could have put it inside, um, or just, yeah. Um, let's just set that down here real quick. We'll show this here. Um, this actually looks better than described. But this is the cover. And of course, if you didn't see me talk about this on the Record Store Day video, this was, believe it or not, a 
concept album, a psychedelic concept album from Frankie Valli and the Four Seasons. Um, it's just kind of an unusual thing in their catalog that they did this. The cover was designed like a newspaper. It actually beats out Jethro Tull on this concept for, uh, for Thick as a Brick. The packaging. Yeah. yeah, this packaging here. It actually beats out Jethro Tull for this packaging here for doing this. Inside here, I, got, I want to be careful with this here. There's like a little insert here, but that's where the record would be. I guess he didn't have a sleeve for the record. The, yeah, there's no sleeve. I mean, I'll give it a sleeve. But um, you do that anyway. There was this little insert here. You know, like a newspaper insert. And what was the ninety-eight cents? Um, U.S. government inspected electric prunes. Oh yeah. Here, solid Elvis Presley, seventy-nine cents. Chocolate covered beetles, a dollar eight a pound. So they're making reference gags. Country Joe Fish for your cat. They're making little reference gags to, you know, to the artists of the time. And in fact, there's even a little, you'll see here, a little uh, gag cartoon here of the Beatles here with the, the Maharishi. So a lot of thought went into this. And if I remember correctly, I might just talk about this album in a separate video. Um, but if I remember correctly, um, I can't think of his name, Jake Holmes, who wrote who wrote the original Days to Confused before it was stolen by Led Zeppelin, helped to write music for this album. Here's more of the insert here. I've never seen this insert before, and I'm being very careful because this is newsprint paper. It actually looks to be in really good shape. It does. It does look to be in really good shape. Look at this. And... On the last pages here, I just caught this here. We've got some full color comics. Wow. Yeah, I mean, they went, they went a lot for this here. And in fact, looking at some of these comics here, these look like they may have been done. I recognize some of the art styles here as belonging to some of the, um, underground comic artists of the time. The underground comics movement began in the late, began in the 60s. And I recognize some of the styles there. No so, peanuts? No, no peanuts. There are, it looks like parodies. There's like a Popeye parody here. I could see an image of Popeye, Little Orphan Annie. Um, but yeah, we definitely have some uh, interesting stuff here. But, yeah, putting the album in shrink wrap. Well, it's probably better wrap. than putting it in with the yeah the I, acidy. I don't know, but from the looks of it, so. even looking at this, it looks pretty darn clean. I mean, it looks better than how it was advertised in eBay as far as the condition. Um, but we'll uh, we'll take this off and we'll put it in a proper sleeve. Um, we're gonna stop for a moment. I'm just gonna clear this away here because of how delicate all this is here and, uh, and then we'll open the last box. Okay, we're back. And you were noticing, I, I handed it off to you and you were noticing that the record looked in really, really good shape. Better than you would expect for a, a what, 60 year old album? album? Especially for what I paid. Cause yeah. there were people who were asking some hefty figures for that album, like up to 30 bucks, 35 bucks. I didn't, wasn't going to spend that much. I spent like less than 15, less than 15 bucks. Yeah. On it. Um, anyways though. So yeah, looking forward to that. And I might talk about that album in a separate video because yeah, it's such a unique kind of thing. Kind of like when Kiss did that concept album, The Elder, which I did do a video on, which did really well. Uh, people still comment to me about it. Um, when Kiss did that concept album called The Elder, just an unusual thing, a kind of a, a, a something very atypical that they were known for. So this last box here, You Discover Music, was having a sale. And they were really marking stuff down. It was a one day, 24 hour flash sale. But anyways, they had some stuff on sale here. Um, 
which I decided, yeah, I will get because it's so inexpensive. Um, first up, Tom Petty, Full Moon Fever. I first got this album on cassette back in the day when it came out. And, uh, and it was, um, I later got it on CD. And one of the funny things about that album was when it was, um, CDs were still a, a new thing at the time. And um, he put a little extra bonus track on the CD in the middle of it, where he, he just did a spoken word bit where he said, attention CD listeners, in fairness to those who may have bought this album on LP or cassette, we will now pause for a moment to give those uh, fans who bought it on LP or cassette a chance to turn over to side two before we resume. And there was a little, there was a little pause. Then he said, okay, here's side two. And that was on the CD version. It's on the CD version I have. I assume it was hopefully kept on future CD versions. But yeah, so in between uh, running down a dream and feel a whole lot better is that little track, hidden track there where he just talks to you and says, we're going to give uh, the LP listeners and the cassette player listeners a chance to turn to over to side two. It's a fun thing. Here it is. I can't remember if this is on colored vinyl or not. I've never owned this on vinyl before. Just like I said, had it on cassette, had it on CD. Here's the sleeve. Very nice. Nice artwork on this. Let's take a look here. It's on standard black vinyl. Okay. So we'll just leave it there. If it were colored vinyl, we show it to you. Then we have... Um, it's a boy. There you go, little boy. Yeah. Then we've got um, two Rolling Stone albums. And these are half-speed masterings. I've been mostly pleased with the half-speed masterings that I've gotten. Uh, Rolling, Stone, Rolling Stone albums. I do have this on vintage vinyl. Had this been just a vinyl pressing, and this is, of course, you know it now, of course, now that I've shown it to you. It's only rock and roll. Had they only had, uh, I've got this on CD, and uh, had they only just had an LP release, I wouldn't have bothered because I've got a vintage LP. But since this is a half-speed mastering, you I had to have it. I, and, and, well, the price, too. In three colors. Exactly. No, but the price, too, just being so inexpensive. Because um, they, yeah, they really mark these down. Here we go. Ah, uh, but yeah, here we go. I think this is an underrated album. Some people have been a little bit more down on it, but it's a uh, boy. yeah, but I, I think it's a really good album. And anyways, though, yeah, so we've got a half speed mastering here, and like I said, pretty much all the half speed masterings I've heard of the Rolling Stones, I've been really pleased with. Some Girls was maybe the only one that I wasn't, but you know, like I said, price and. Uh, I really like the vintage copy I had. This next one is another Half Speed Mastering. It's one of the few Rolling Stones albums I don't have and have never listened to. I did a video a while back how there's only like a very small handful of Stones albums that I don't know. And this is one of them. And I've heard mixed things about this album. I may not like this album, I don't know. Show but this is what you got. Emotional Rescue by the Rolling Stones. And, uh, but again, Half speed mastering, so it's hopefully going to sound as good as it's going to sound, as it could sound, at least. But no, I was not real thrilled with the with the singles, She's So Cold, and I was not thrilled with the other one, um, Emotional Rescue, although I liked it a little bit better. So, you know, back then, if the singles didn't sound very good, that wasn't much incentive to go out and, like, purchase an album. You'd be kind of like, no, I'm not going to bother with that. But thanks for opening that, super fan. And inner sleeve. Yeah. And black vinyl. We're not gonna pull that out for that reason. But yeah, this will be one that I have never heard. It's interesting to note um, that, you know, for a long time, I was definitely always right from the beginning a huge Beatles fan and, you know, started getting the albums. The Stones, for a long time, I was just a Greatest Hits fan, but then slowly started getting into the albums. 
And then I bought the, the mono set, which introduced me to all the early, early stuff. I liked it on CD, I had the CD box set, but then I did buy the re-release of the mono box set and was like really impressed with how good the mono box sounded on vinyl. I thought it beat out the CD version and I appreciated the albums a lot more because of the, the vinyl, the LP mono box set. And as it turns out now, I have more, way more stones on vinyl than Beatles, and, uh, which is interesting, uh, the dichotomy of that because I still would think I'm a bigger Beatles fan than a Stones fan, although my appreciation for the Stones has increased immeasurably over the last 10 years. And I've, you know, so I've gotten more and more into the albums and I have more of their albums now on LP. In fact, I'm at the point now, it's like, well, you've got almost all of them now on LP. You just need to buy the rest. Yeah, I just need to buy the rest. You might as well just get the rest of the collection. Um, but there we go. Um, emotional Rescue. So I'll be, I'll be checking it out. But there we go. We've got... Uh, we had quite a backlog. And thank you so much for watching. I am working on some more in-depth videos. Uh, that one, in fact, that one about the Rolling Stones uh, that I put a uh, forum page on, asked for some in feedback on it. It's going to be titled um, The Most Unusual Rolling Stones Song. And uh, it's an in-depth look at one particular song in their catalog that is very atypical, very unlike the Rolling Stones. And everybody, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you like these videos, be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon so you never miss a video. A big thank you to the patron supporters. Patron supporters do receive exclusive weekly videos not available on this channel. You're a fierce and mighty. And also, if you can't be a patron supporter, we understand. You can always show your thanks by leaving a one-time super thanks on any video that I post. Or you can just simply click a like, and that goes a long way in helping with this channel. And just thank you so much for, for, your, your, uh, for hanging out with us. Appreciate you spending time uh, while we talk about music. And we'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.